Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, Solanaci, written by Echoing Cascade. The Uniplanitia God was the largest collection of flora in the sector, and as such was visited by sentients of many species on a daily basis. Droz was a new god and barely a week on the job under his belt. In that short time, he had managed to annoy his boss and ridicule himself in front of his peers. He had called for a life-or-death emergency when he spotted a bipedal walking in the nightshade wing of the garden without a protective suit. Once the medical team, senior guards, and his boss showed up, it turned out the bipedal in question was an old man Gyra, the gardener, walking stick in hand, making the rounds. He was a death world who was uniquely skilled to tend to that wing, since nearly all of the deadly plants hailed from his home world of Earth. After apologizing profusely, Droz was assigned to the nightshade wing, a beat no one liked since you had to do it in a hazard suit or risk painful death. Droz had started to get used to patrolling in the suit. The beat was relaxing once you got used to it especially since very few people went to the trouble of visiting the wing. The mandatory suit was a great deterrent. In the few cases visitors did show up, old man Gyra was a as polite and professional a guide as he had ever seen. He couldn't help but chuckle inwardly, as the gardener started every explanation with his trademark, This here you see. But today, something felt wrong. Four visitors were about to enter the wing when they looked, Odd, not in the way that they dressed, but in the way that they moved. Droz called it in. He would much rather risk further ridicule than his or Gyra's lives. He was given a simple reply. Let the old man deal with it. We'll be there in fifteen minutes. Don't get in his way. Every fiber of his being told him to do something, but before he could move, old man Gyra winked at him and locked him in the corridor leading to the wing. He had watched helplessly as the gardener led the four on a tour of the flora of Earth. Chaosokas was a Mysoran, seven feet tall reptilian predators. He led a small crew of highly skilled thieves and assassins. When he heard of the Uniplanitia garden, he saw it as a perfect way to use their thieving skills to improve their assassination tools. Dozens of deadly toxins so rare no one would have any antidotes or countermeasures for them in place and only a token security team guarding them. Almost too easy. He and his men had been following the old man who kept explaining facts about the many plants. Probably some kind of genetically engineered dim-witted creature made to be immune to the poisons. Not that Chaos Gas really cared. He was bigger than the guy, and he wasn't alone. Chaos Gas had spotted the plants he wanted. Tobacco, mint, chili peppers, hemlock, poison ivy, and nightshade. He picked the last solely as not a subtle frack you to the garden. He made a gesture to his men and they began to walk in four different directions. Or uh, they would have, if not for the loud clang. They all stopped and turned to face the source of the sound. The guide had slammed the tip of his walking stick into the ground with such a force that the metal floor had dented. Gyra. This is here, you see, is a white oak. It grew in the light of a star that would cook your species alive and welcome drain that would perforate your hides in the increased gravity of old terror. Kieskas was confused and frightened. He looked to the old guide for some sort of harmless simpleton, but there he was, threatening him and his men. Still, the man was alone. He gave the sign to rush him. Jira sighed raised his walking stick horizontally in front of him, held it with both hands and began to pull. Kiasika saw the seam he didn't know was there, widened on the stick, and a flash of something metal. This here, you see, is what we back home called tempered steel. Sixteen minutes later, Droz and his full security team entered the nightshade wing, by then, all they could do was pick up the four bodies. Droz learned an age-old truth that day, something all other guards already knew. 
the deadliest thing in any garden is the gardener. End of story. Story number two. Grey Area, written by Algy Father Anthracite. Well now, that's a bit of a grey area, said the portly human behind the desk. What do you mean, grey area? I asked. Technically, those chemicals you want to offload on my station are perfectly legal, began the human. Then what is the problem? I snapped. He continued as if I hadn't spoken. But we happen to know that at least two of them are what we would call precursor chemicals, he finished. What is a precursor chemical? I asked. And why does that mean I can't unload my cargo? A precursor chemical is a chemical used as an ingredient to make something else, which is more dangerous. Drugs or explosives, for example. And the vast majority of your cargo can be unloaded. No problem. However, in order to unload containers 77542 and 56409, we are going to need some uh, additional paperwork. The human leans forward and rubs several of his manipulated digits in a circular pattern. What forms must I fill out? I asked. The human sighs deeply and then falls back into the chair. He mumbles under his breath for a moment. He taps the fleshy flaps that cover his speech orifice with a single digit. I'll tell you, Captain. I'll take care of the paperwork and I'll even expedite and unload. And in exchange, you can give me a little something. You know, for the effort. He bears his fangs at me in what is supposed to be an endearing human gesture. But it only puts me on edge. What do you want for this effort? I asked, still confused about the whole problem. Oh, maybe a few hundred credits. I got to give a little to the longshoreman, too. Let's call it 750 credits. Suddenly, I understood. He was a petty bureaucrat. It didn't matter what race he was from. They were all the same. A document processing fee. With an expedited unloading. Yep, that's the thing, he said with a smile. Done, I said. Compared to some of the busier hubs, a 750 credit bribe was practically pocket change. We quickly made the transaction. He gave me a document and told me to hand it to the dockmaster. Our business concluded, and I walked out the office. Greg Mahag, how are you? Sit, sit, whiskey? The portly human raised his chair to greet me, pointing at a small couch I could comfortably sit in. I waved off the offer beverage as I sat. Hello, Dean. I'm good, and you? Good, good. My boy's just started college. House feels empty without him. Sorry, uh, what brings you in today? The human settled back into his seat as I spoke. I have some cargo I need to unload with our papers, I say. Side job, he asks. I'm just here to refuel, officially. Nothing too hot, right? You know the rules, right? No slaves, no weapons. It's some kind of knockoff electronics without rights management hardware, I told him. He was crooked, but he wasn't completely bent. He smiles and types on his keyboard for a few minutes. He hands me a printout and says, Here you go, just give this to the Jonesy boys. They'll take care of it. Thanks, sir. You want the usual payment? I asked, slipping the form into the pouch. Nah, we've been doing it since you started giving us good word of mouth. This one's on me. I appreciate it. The human exposes his fangs again. Well, that's very generous of you, uh, Thanks, I said. Hey, I take care of my people, and you're one of my people. We stood up, and he bowed his head twice in a farewell gesture of my people. I returned the gesture and waved as I turned and left. What's going on here? The portly human roared as he walked into the chaos of the dock. Everyone suddenly stopped. Hello, Dean. Don't see you on the docks too often, I said. All over the open area around the dock of my ship, my crew and Dean's longshoremen were fighting with some Verlin or lizard race. When Dean had bellowed so loudly, everyone stopped. The longshoremen had been handedly overpowering the Verin despite being only two-thirds the size of the Verins. The humans were considerably denser and much stronger. Okay, please explain, Dean said as his man rounded up every one of the docks who was fighting. This gentle being believes I've been running unmanifested cargo and charging him for the fuel. Oh, does he? Dean asked. He turned to look up into the face of the Verin leader. Got any proof? We are attempting to investigate when we were attacked by the Gebs and your men, the Baron said. Investigate? You tried to open cargo on the dock, D 
Dean asked. Yes, to verify the contents of shipping containers. Jonesy, take these guys to the brig. I'll deal with them later, Dean said. Jonesy and his men led the Varen away. As for you, we'll do full inventory. Got to keep up appearances, Dean said. He leaned closer and whispered, My men won't find anything that isn't on the pull of loading. Don't worry. So, uh, trespassing of restricted areas, attempted theft, assault and battery. Tell me why I shouldn't hand you for the Federated Guards, Deed said. The Varen leader hissed and said, We were trying to ascertain if we were being cheated. I'm justified in my action. Oh, that may be true in Varen Station, but this is a human Concordian Station. You've committed serious crimes. Deed sat in a chair opposite the cell holding the Varen crew. You could face hefty fines and serious jail time. And before you start crying about it, my men are inventorying the shipment as we speak. If anything is found, I'll let you know, but even if we do find something, that doesn't excuse your behavior. Call the magistrate, and we will get this dealt with quickly, the Baron Reader replied. Oh, there's no magistrate on the station, but he is scheduled to visit in a month or so. Until then, you can call off in here. Dean stood up and adjusted his suit coat. He started to walk away. What? There must be a faster way to resolve this. Dean stopped and turned back. He looked thoughtful for a moment and then said, Well, I think this little kerfuffle of yours might fall into a grey area. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak he know, who has become the only tier six patron. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.